where each polynomial is a product of linear factors. All right, I know what you're saying. Let's just whip out the calculator. But we can do this one by hand, okay? So this is my p, and this, which is a 1, is my q. So p, the products for 1 are plus or minus 1, and the products for q are plus or minus 1. So it's not too bad. So our possible zeros are plus or minus 1. So I'm going to try negative 1 in my synthetic division. So when I look at this, though, it's not quite in descending order, is it? I'm missing a x to the third. So that's 0x to the third. So I'm going to have 1, 0, negative 4, negative 4, and negative 1. I'm going to bring down my 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. I add down to get negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Add down to get negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. I add down to get negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And when I add down, I get my great 0. So I know x plus 1 is one of my linear factors. So let's see. Let's try negative 1 again and see what we get. So I'm going to do synthetic division again. Bring down my 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add down get, to get negative 2. Negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. Add down to get negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And when I add down, I get my magical 0 again. So I know this actually is a double root or a multiplicity of 2. So what I have here is x squared minus 2x minus 1. And I'm going to make that equal to 0. Unfortunately, this guy does not factor very nice. So what we're going to have to do is use the quadratic formula. So remember, this is my a, 1 is my a, negative 2 is my b, and negative 1 is my c. So I'm going to have negative, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. So I'm going to bring this right up here. So negative negative 2 is a 2, plus or minus the square root. Now, negative 2 squared is actually 4. Okay, so 4. A negative 4 times a negative 1 is plus 4, under our square root, all over 2 times 1 is 2. So the gap, that gives me 2, plus or minus the square root of 8, over 2. Well, if you remember from earlier, the square root of 8 actually reduces into 2, the square root of 2, all divided by 2, which reduces farther because there's a 2 in all of these. Um, let's do that. 2 times 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. Those cancel. So x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. But to make it as a linear factor, what I have to do is say that x minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. And that actually gives me two of them. It gives me x minus 1 plus the square root of 2 and x minus 1 minus the square root of 2. And so this is my product of linear factors. Yep, that was a lot of work, but it was kind of fun. Read each polynomial as a product of linear factors. So this is my p, and this, wow, is my q. So p is going to equal, my factors are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. For q, it's going to be plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6, because it's all the factors of 6. So my possible zeros, wow, we're going to have some fractions in here. It's going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 half, because 1 divided by 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus uh, 3 halves, because that's 3 over 2, and so on. So I think you see where this is going, okay? 
So I'm going to use synthetic division to figure out which one of these is my zero. So I'm going to set up my synthetic division. And I'm going to try mm, positive 3. So I'm going to write my 6, negative 17, negative 4, 3. I'm going to bring my 6 down. 6 times 3 is 18. Add down to get 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Add down to get negative 1. And 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And I add down to get 0. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, how did you pick 3 out of all the possibles? Well, I got to tell you the truth. I went ahead and did all the possibles to figure out 3 is one of them. I don't have a lot of time. You only get 10 minutes for these little videos, so I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. So what this is, is actually 6x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. Now I'm thinking to myself, maybe this factors. Maybe it doesn't. Let's try it. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. So I'm going to be doing the AC method or the grouping method. Well, I know that negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and 3 times negative 2 is also 6. Well, 3 plus negative 2 gives me my positive 1. So I'm going to have 6x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. If you don't quite remember the grouping method, go back to one of my reviews. It's not too bad. So to continue the grouping method, I look at the first two and say, well, what's in common? 3x is in common, actually. So that leaves me 2x plus 1. Because remember, when I distribute, I have to return to my original. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. Now this is a key that I'm going to take out a negative. Well, nothing's in common, so I'm going to take out a negative 1, which leaves me with 2x plus 1. Well, that's a good thing, because remember, these guys have to match. So it's going to factor into 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 equals 0. Now you're probably wondering, well, which one of these is in my zeros. Well, actually, let's do that. Um, we have 3x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1, so 3x equals 1, so x equals 1 third. And we would have gotten that right here, 1 over 3, 1 third. The 2x plus 1 equals 0, minus 1, 2x equals negative 1, so x equals negative 1 half. And that's also one of my possible zeros. So write this as a product of linear factors. I'm going to have x minus 3 times 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 1. And I'm going to make that equal to y. For more practice, go to www.piecrest.com for free math worksheets with the solutions.